going to are going to perform. Um, now, this is the part of the uh, the presentation I'm finding really hard because normally I can see everybody in the room and everyone's either nodding or they're shaking their heads and I know how far to go in. So please um, put any messages you've got or questions you've got in the chat box um, because I don't want to move on until people have really got a good understanding of what I'm talking about there. But it, so essentially, we, every time a wireless device connects to our modem, it takes up some of the bandwidth that that modem's got to distribute information. So if we've got everybody in the house connected by a Wi-Fi, that's when we start to it, see it bogged down. But the more devices that we can get connected via a cable, it's going to free up that Wi-Fi bandwidth so that those devices that can't connect via a cable uh, become quicker and perform better. Hoping that's making sense for people. If not, leave, leave a question and we'll, and we'll, we'll address it. Uh, so far, everyone's nodding, Matty. That's good, good, good nodding. Uh, what we're going to move on to, so we've talked about uh, structured cabling, so to going to devices like our smart TVs, our um, printers, our um, uh, desktop computers, uh, Apple TVs, uh, the kids' gaming devices, you know, the Xboxes and all those sorts of things, they can all have a... Uh, a fixed Ethernet connection, even the Foxtel box uh, can have a fixed uh, Ethernet connection. We're now going to move on to start to talk about some of our control devices. And the entry level for that is, is like a BLE or a wireless device. So we've got two types of devices in our range. And one's a dimmer and one's a switch. So what that gives us the ability to do is, is it's just a simple little device that goes into our switch plate and it can control our lights, it can turn them on and off, we can do schedules, and then we can also control them if we're in the same room with our mobile phones. So that's that's a Bluetooth device. Lots of different switch plate options and a free app for people to download. So that gives us the ability to, to control lots of different things, but it's very simple entry level. Like I said, it gives us the ability to dim via the app uh, if we're in the room, but it also gives us to do schedules. So if we start looking at uh, things like towel rails or pumps and motors, uh, all those sort of simple devices that you want to want to run, it gives us the ability to have some really quick, smart control of those devices. Uh, and also, you know, so a towel rail, for instance, you could set it for uh, to come on at 5 a.m. if you know that you're always going to be hopping in the shower at 6 a.m., uh, the tail will be nice and toasty for you by the time you get out. We've also got connected sockets. So we can now replace the simple PowerPoint with a connected socket. It's going to have that same uh, Bluetooth connection back to the app. So it gives us the ability to schedule those loads. Uh, so I, I like the idea of being able to turn the kids' PlayStation off. Maybe it's turning the modem off so that the so that all the kids have got to get off the internet at night time. But again, you could have fish tanks, tower rails. Um, you might want to turn the AV off or the standby power off on the TV, or it might be a nice plug-in lamp. Again, was talking about uh, direct one-to-one. -one. So you've got to be in the room to use your phone, but it, it's got lots of functionality in the app. And some of those those scheduling options that the app, the phone doesn't need to be in the room for those things to to run. Now we've also got motion sensors. Now motion sensors are my favourite type of automation. They're the simplest type, and it means that light comes on when you're in the room and it goes off when you're out of the room. And sometimes I think the simplest forms of automation can be the best. Uh, this is a product that's available now. Uh, and we see it used a lot in walk-in robes, uh, pantries, where really there's no need for them to be part of a greater scene or, or on-off ca capabilities. You're either in that room or you're not. So uh, it'll help you save some electricity because it'll turn off. And instead of forgetting when you walk out of the room, it'll turn off after a certain amount of time. So I just want to go from there, go back a step. What we've got coming out in the coming months is a device that's going to bring these Bluetooth devices together. Oh, I'm going too far. It's going to bring these devices together and give us a, a connected home. 
So you're going to be able to have wireless devices, you're going to be able to add a gateway, and it's going to give you the ability to talk to a smart speaker. You're going to have more range than just be in the room. You're going to be able to be anywhere and control those devices. Um, and that's coming down the track. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. I'll just scroll back through all these. Any questions so far? No, you must be doing a sensational job. Uh, one question. Uh, can you turn the coffee machine on before you get up? <laughs> yeah, we could. You could definitely do that. Yep. I just said you can't add the milk or the coffee, though. Uh, the smarter, yeah, that's yeah, that's, the, <laughs> that's the key. The switch one for um, the milk. Grab the milk for you. Uh, and there's one slide you've thrown, you've shown up. Uh, it's uh, the question is it's set available July 2020. Is this on the market now? Uh, was that the smart connected socket? I dare say so, yes. Yes, yeah, so uh, what are we, June? It's it's just around the corner, that device. It's nearly available. It's coming very shortly, the, the connected socket. That's... Uh... Um, so one other question is how do I process have this system with my builder or should I have external contractors? We may answer that at the end. We may wait to the very end and talk about yeah, that we'll, in a part we'll, of it. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about it, but yes. Yep. Uh, and is the Bluetooth powered by AC or batteries? No, it's it's uh, it's all part of the uh, 240 volt device. Yes, so no batteries in those ones. Uh, and that's it for the moment. Cool. So what we're going to go from that, that's very much entry level. So that's if we're if you're in an apartment or you're in a it's you're, you're building your, your home and you know you want a little bit of technology, but you probably just want to have a play. You want to have two or three, four, maybe even half a dozen smart devices in the home and you want to have them on the app. That's that's the place to start. You can really, you know, get some great little functionality and flexibility out of some of the wireless products. If you're about to build or do a significant renovation and you know that you want a truly smart home, that's where we go into the next next level, and that's CBUS for the connected home. It's wired, it's robust, it's reliable. Um, it's been around a long time, and people think that's to our detriment, but it actually shows um, our longev longevity in, in, in the market because um, we're constantly um, providing updates for these products. We're developing new ones to go into the system, but unlike a lot of technology products that aren't backwards compatible, everything we launch for CBUS can go into a CBUS home from 20 years ago. So, for instance, if you went out and bought a, uh, a 19 uh, or 2000, 2001 Mercedes Benz, you couldn't then go and get a part from Mercedes and put it into that, in, you know, put a new dash into the Mercedes and have it run on the new software. Whereas with CBUS, you can go and buy a house from, you know, 2001, 2002 that's got CBUS in it and the products that we release tomorrow for CBUS will be able to go into that home and upgrade its capabilities and functionality. So when we start to talk about whole home control, we use a cable in between, a specific communications cable in between all the devices. So hopefully you can see the pink lines here on my screen. Uh, that's showing that there's a physical connection between all these devices so that when you send a message, um, it's, it works first time and every time. Now, the difference between that and our wireless products is wireless products, just, uh, they're, they're great for their functionality and their flexibility, but they create a few more points of potential sort of uh, not failure, but that it might not work the first time. So you, you're very much relying on your internet or your Bluetooth connection. And we know that when we walk too far out of range for those devices, that sometimes the message always does, doesn't always get through. So yes, we've got the ability to control CBUS wirelessly from our smart devices. But we're, what we haven't got, we've minimised the amount of wireless connection. So we've got a physical cable connection between all of our smart devices, and then it's just our tablet or our smartphone that's talking wirelessly to our router. Everything else should have a physical connection. Hopefully that's making sense.
this this is it truly everything electrical in the home can be controlled by a, a, a C bus uh, control system. So anything from a ceiling fan, shutters, blinds, uh, anything electrical, whether it's your hot water or your pool pump. Uh, obviously, your lighting control is definitely done by CBUS, um, and, and it's the most comprehensive automation system on the market. Got a huge range of different switch options and, and very customizable. Like I said before, we do have the ability to control it from our smart tablet, and that and that user interface is fully customizable, but it also has has the ability to start talking to other products. So we talked about blinds and fans, uh, all of those sorts of things. CBUS, uh, which is a new evolution of CBUS, we now also have the ability to receive information from how we're using our energy. So we've, we've got a product we're gonna talk about in, in a little bit for our energy management, but CBUS is able to receive information from all those different devices and make, you know, make controlled decisions. So uh, it's really, it's not a lighting control system anymore. It's really a, a home control system. It's talking to everything from the AC and the HVAC to your security, your energy, your entertainment, uh, and of course your lights and blinds. And Maddie, um, yes. I might just, just you know, might cover a few questions while we're going. So yep, definitely. Uh, Sean has asked, has the CBUS cable from the previous slide just a standard RJ45 Ethernet or a proprietary CBUS cable? Okay, so we do use a proprietary CBUS cable. Uh, it is a it is essentially a pink Cat5e, but it's been tested and has a, a insulation uh, rating to allow it to enter a switchboard, which standard data cables don't usually have. So uh, it, it's also used for identification purposes, other than maybe defense, who I believe use a, like a salmon covered colored cable. Our pink um, CBUS cable is quite widely known in the electrical industry as a control cable for CBUS. Uh, okay, and the, the question that everyone asks, uh, what price? <laughs> Do you want to cover that at the end? <laughs> um, we will. It's very hard to say what the price is because it is a customizable solution. And like I said before, CBUS can be used in anything from an apartment through to uh, running some of our biggest football stadiums in Australia. So it's a modular system that, that grows as the house grows. Um, I would say it, it, it is very hard, but the entry level componentry price would be somewhere between eight to ten thousand dollars depending on on what home you're building and it would go up from there uh, and the last one on the CBUS at the moment is uh, does it operate locally or does it require an internet connection so that's one of the really good things about CBUS now uh, how, as much as we love the internet CBUS fully functions without the need for internet so if you're at home and the internet goes down your CBUS does not. So that, that's a critical thing when you're making a smart home decision. So that's a great question. I wish we had some prizes, Russ, to give to that person that asked that question. Yep. Sorry. Um, but it is a great question um, because a lot of systems that are coming out onto the market and they're, they're, they're saying, oh, you know, we're, we're IoT ready. Um, but in actual fact, if the internet goes down, the devices don't work. So... CBUS is IoT ready, uh, but it also doesn't need the internet to function. So you don't want to, the internet to go down and all of a sudden you can't turn your lights on or you can't open a door or you can't, you know, turn the fan off. So great question. Um, CBUS is internet ready, but it's not reliant on the internet to work. Uh, and you can continue. Great. Uh, something else that I wanted to touch on, this is another product that, it's, it's not launched yet, but it's coming in the next couple of months. Um, and it's called our CBUS and DALI Gateway. Now, DALI is a lighting protocol. It's used very much in the commercial buildings world. And it's where they first started dimming uh, fluorescent lighting. Obviously, now that has evolved to dim LED lighting. But the next evolution that we're going to see is we're going to see the ability to change the colour temperature of the lights depending on what time of day it is. Now, that's uh, really important for anyone that's interested in circadian rhythm lighting or what we call dim to warm. Now, 
I'm not a lighting engineer and I'm not a health specialist, but we what we do know is that uh, work, light and lighting conditions can have a very big impact on our wellness and our sleep patterns. So it, that might be something you want to research sort of further offline or I'll try and answer any questions for you if I can. But yeah, CBUS and is going to have the ability to control circadian rhythm lighting via our daily gateways. And we'll I think we'll start to see that in homes over the next, uh, probably by the end of the year or if not early next year. So voice, uh, what I wanted to talk about here is just simply point out the fact that voice can, these smart speakers, and I'm sure many of you have got them in your homes, whether it's a Google Home, an Amazon Echo, or an, or an Apple HomePod, they're smart, but they don't actually do anything unless they're connected to a smart device. So they're just what we call just another interface. So we've got sensors, we've got uh, light switches, we've got tablets, and we've got voice control. But realistically, what they are is if, if you're old enough to remember the old remote controls on the TV that used to actually have a cord that went back to the TV, well, it's just another interface to turn the TV on and off, if that makes sense. I hope it does. So the point I'm trying to make there is that those smart speakers, are, they're only as good as controlling as the smart devices that they're interfaced with. So if you want to control your whole home from a smart speaker, well, you need a smart home in the background, and that's what CBUS provides. So here's just a quick snapshot. So we spoke about the BLE devices, and they're the ones on the left. So what we call my room. So we've got dimmers, timers, scheduling, sunset, sunset uh, timers. Uh, they talk Bluetooth to our mobile mobile phone. As I mentioned, what we've got coming soon is a little gateway that's going to mesh all those devices together and give us the ability to talk to our smart speaker or talk to our, our mobile phone when we're outside of that room or outside of our house. Um, and then step three is obviously when we know we've got a full home that we want to control everything inside it or even just the majority of things inside it, we want to go for a cabled solution because it's going to give us reliability, robustness, and a, and, a, and a lot more interface options. I'm going to pause there for again for questions if we can, because we, we're sort of moving in a different direction on the next slide, I think. Uh, uh, we've got one question. Does it support the Zigbee protocol or just BLE? Okay, so that is a really good question. Did you, did you type that question, Russ? I can't see the chat box. So uh, they start out as BLE. So when we're talking about in-room control, that's BLE. Uh, thank you for the question. We've actually also got a Zigbee chip in a lot of these products. And when we add the gateway, they start talking Zigbee to the gateway. So uh, to answer the question, both with BLE and Zigbee. We're obviously doing too good a job because, oh, why don't we go on more? Uh, what is the price of a BLE switch? Um, I believe... If you go, um, oh, it, it's probably a question for your electrician or your builder. Um, I, I'm not sure whether if you go onto the clipsal.com, whether we've got some retail pricing on there for the for the Bluetooth switches, Russ? Uh, it would be, mate, yeah. The retail price would be there on the website for yeah. sure. You're probably looking somewhere between $150 to $200, I would say, uh, just for the device on its own. Um, and the, um, another question, why do we need, why, okay, so, I'm under, so if I read this, do we need internet for in-home Wi-Fi control? Which would be no. Uh, for in-home Wi-Fi? Yeah, not necessarily, no. Uh, so if it's the in-room Bluetooth stuff, no, you don't need the internet for, for those devices to function. Um, once we step up to the my home or the or the gateway, the, the wiser home, uh, you're definitely going to need internet for that external access or for your smart speaker to work. Yep. Um, uh, the Rash is asking probably more technical answers, questions that we might take offline about firmware and stuff. So we might answer that later. Okay. Uh, Gavin has asked, as a consumer, can I buy a replacement BLE device faceplates from Bunnings? Uh, no, 
Um, Clipsal is a trade brand, so we've we've always been very much committed to our trade partners. In saying that, uh, with all the different styles and plates that we've got, you're going to be able to walk into like a Hayman's or a CNW or an Ideal Electrical or a Setnage and get those plates. It's just not just not a product that's available through Bunnings. Is that it? Uh, that's it for the moment, mate, yeah. All right, cool. We're going to talk about energy next. Um, obviously, electricity bills is, is something that most people is, are starting to see uh, growing uh, and it's becoming a biggest concern. And I would say over the last couple of months, the way it, people have been working from home or spending a lot more time at home, I'd say we'll see uh, a spike in energy consumption as well, because a lot of the time people go out for the day, whereas now we're at home, we're using more power, whether that's computers or, you know, doing the washing and stuff. So what what we would have seen is a peak during the day of, of, of electricity consumption. What we've got is the ability to monitor each circuit and start making some smart decisions on how we use our power. Uh, we've got a price, uh, a product called Wiser Energy, and it gives us the ability to, like I said, monitor each circuit, monitor our overall consumption, but also monitor if we've got solar, how much we're producing. And what we can start to do is we can see what time of day we're using power on what circuits, and we can change some of our habits to get the most out of our um, solar production. So what it is, it's basically just, again, it's a little uh, Zigbee device that, that clips onto the top of your circuit breaker and it connects back to the internet via your modem and then we can display, look at the information through our iPads. Uh, depending on how, how far we've gone at home, we might then want to send that information on to our CBUS so that it can turn things on and off for us or we might just want to set some schedules through our Bluetooth time clock. Here's just a quick snapshot, maybe a little bit too technical, but it's a quick snapshot of how, how it goes together. Next thing I'm going to talk about is electric vehicle charging. <clears throat> Always another hot topic at the moment and something that a lot of people haven't really thought about, but it, it's a growing trend and, it, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger. Two thousand and seventeen. There's your figures of two point two point eight million EVs on the road. They're predicting by twenty forty that there'll be five hundred and thirty million uh, on the road. That that'd be a quarter of all vehicles globally. What that means though is there's going to be need to be a place to charge them all. What we so if we can see here the uptake in electric vehicles. I know certainly there are more and more of them on the road, whether that's um, full electric or whether they're battery hybrids or petrol hybrids. Um, we're seeing more and more electric vehicles on the road and they all need somewhere to plug in. What we've found is that most of those, most of that charging will probably be either at home or at work. So uh, at night, obviously your car sits there. It's probably the time that's stagnant for the most time you're going to need to charge that car at home. Now, depending on how electricity prices change and how they start billing us, it will be more, I don't know if we can uh, just, uh, sorry, everybody there again. Yeah, can you still see you? I'm just getting a bit of feedback. Oh, uh, that's better, all good. Um, where was I? Yes, yeah, so the way electricity prices are gonna, gonna change, or we already know that we get billed more for using, uh, or potentially in some states get billed more for using uh, power at peak times. So what we're not gonna wanna do is pull up at home, plug our car into the wall and charge straight away. We're gonna want a smart system that's gonna charge that when, when we've got the power to charge it. But also, we're going to probably need a dedicated circuit. So again, if you're building a new home or you're doing a su substantial renovation, it's a discussion you're going to want to have with your builder and your electrician because 
more than likely there's going to be a, a, a smart home, uh, an electric vehicle in the garage of that home in, in the not too distant future. <clears throat> so obviously, the more electric vehicles that get released, the cheaper they'll be get. They're increasing in range. And we've got the state governments planning to electrify their fleets. So they're tipping that 2025 will be the tipping point where cost for EVs will hit parity with internal combustion cars. Apologise, we're getting a little bit of interference. I hope it's not too unbearable for you there. Generally, there's two types of plugs uh, that come with all the electric vehicles. It's type one or type two. Uh, at Schneider, we've got the ability to have both those plugs, depending on what vehicle you want to have in your house, or, or you can get separate leads. <clears throat> so this little smart wall box here is what you would probably see on the wall of your garage, or maybe even at, at your apartment blocks. Uh, easy to install, easy to maintain. But like I said, you want to talk to your electrician or your builder about having a dedicated circuit for the electric vehicle charging. That's just a snapshot uh, that we obviously make others. We've got commercial ones as well that you might see at a shopping centre or at a hotel. Little, Just a little fun fact here. A lot of people saying, oh, you know, we're not going to be able to, electric vehicles aren't really going to work in Queensland. You've got the ability now to drive from Cairns to Coolangatta and there are charging stations all, all along the way. And that, that's a project that Schneider Electric's been part of as well. So there's, there's 18 different charging stations between Cairns and Coolangatta. So you can make your way up the coastline in your uh, electric vehicle. Sorry. Got a glitch here. Yeah, so that, that's what I was saying before. The majority of the charging will take place in homes and offices. So whether it's uh, at your workplace, whether whether they're going to do that for you, or most likely you're going to need to charge it at home. And then you're going to want to charge it at the right time of day. So maybe it's talking back to, you know, you might have some uh, code written in your C bus system that decides when to charge the, the electric vehicle. How are we going for questions, Russ? I'm just going to play a quick video and then I reckon we could, I'll turn the presentation off and people could probably turn their videos on if they want to ask a question, I would say. So that's all right. Yeah, no, all good so far, mate. You've answered everything so far. Great. No sound, Matty. Sorry? We can't hear him. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Do you know what I've got a tick there for that to work, Ross? What's it, not, what's it not doing? Apart from not playing. <laughs> what about now? That's it. Is that working? It's working. It's just a little bit laggy at the moment. I have to refresh it. Start from the beginning. Lost the volume again. Can you hear that, Ross? No, we can see him, but we can't hear him. All right. Well, that's probably a good thing. He's a bit of a wally, anyway. <laughs> no, he's good. He's an interesting fella. This is a video. A guy by the name of Chris Riddell. Um, you can you can see him sometimes on some of the morning TV programs. He's, what they call a, a, a futurist. Um, basically, what he's running through is a typical smart apartment. All the different things you could have, 
what he's showing here is uh, facial facial recognition. Um, he's talking about that giving you the ability to enter the home. There's also things like smart fingerprint locks, so keyless entry into your home. Um, obviously, coming home and things being automated when you come home. The lights come on as you walk in, disarming the security, opening blinds, that sort of thing. Gives you the ability to set a variety of scenes, control via your iPad or your smartphone, all the different things in the house. Here he's showing that, that was a CBUS Zen EDLT. It's fully customizable. In that home, they even had the ability to turn the shower on and off or change the uh, the voltage glass so from, from clear to frosted. Um, you've got the ability to use voice control or, you know, here, here's your coffee machine. Hey, voice Matty, control. Just, just for information, one of the, one of the uh, customers has posted the link in the chat section as well, so. Sorry. Uh, yeah, one of the viewers has posted the link in the chat section as well. Okay, to that video? To that video, mate, yes. Oh, great. Perfect. Well, I'll stop it. Um, we'll leave it there. Uh, you know, he's a really interesting fella, that Chris Riddell. He's a, a futurist, so he looks at a lot of uh, trends that are happening globally, and he, and he was kind enough to help us with that video. So um, check it out via the link if you like. But I think now I might take the presentation down and if people have got some questions, uh, we can, I'm happy to answer those. Hey Matthew, Gavin here. Good morning, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, so I'm just a homeowner and I just wanted to, uh, I was looking at the BLE solution just to um, automate a couple of lights in the house. Yeah. Um, so I get, my understanding is that I need to get an electrician to install or like take out the existing switch and put in the base unit for the um, BLE system yeah. and the BLE device inside that. Yep. And then I and then I can kind of swap the face plates as a as a user, you know, as I decorate and change the look of the house. Yes. Um, so I'd be able to go to Heyman's or whatever and buy a face plate. I'm just wondering roughly, you know, um, how much that would cost. I guess I could just do one one switch. Uh, it looks like it's about um, two hundred bucks for the um, BLE. Yeah. Um, the 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 base unit. And getting a Sparky to do all that, so we're probably talking about five hundred bucks per switch. Would that be a kind of ballpark fitted uh, by a Sparky would, for for one switch? I would say that's probably. Yeah. I probably. Um, I don't think it'll cost you that much. It is yeah. really hard for us. We we don't like to dictate um, what what installation costs will be. That's really not our department. Um, but I don't think it'll be that much for one switch. Yeah, but off the Clipsil website, I can get price list price for. All of that gear just to kind of gauge the pricing. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'll just do a bit of digging. Um, and then, yeah, I can kind of grow that over time. So I can do Definitely. one switch, connect that, do another one, or, you know, work out a deal with it with the Sparky to do whatever makes sense and grow it yes. over time. Okay, cool. The other thing with the, uh, the install, Gavin, is it probably won't cost you as much as you think because basically there's no change to the wiring either. So they're basically just going to take the faceplate off, obviously turn the power off, take the faceplate off, pull the existing Mac out and put the new Mac in. So it shouldn't, like Matt's referencing, it shouldn't cost you a whole lot to change the plates. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. And it'll fit in a standard kind of, uh, you know, if we've got a clip so, um switch there now, it'll drop in the same uh, yeah, wall as, the wall. As long as it's not like an architrave, style where it's into the, into the timber of, an, of the architrave or something yeah, like that. Yeah. As long as it's into a normal jip rock wall, it, it's going to go into a normal bracket. Yes. Yeah, cool. Hey, Matt. Uh, yep, my name is Naresh. Uh, thanks. Good morning. It was, yeah, good morning. It was really amazing. Thanks. It's actually answered quite a few 
uh, questions of what I had in my uh, back of my mind. Uh, I right. do work in, um, you know, in like mining, but uh, I'm not an electrician or anything. I'm just uh, engineer, uh, processing engineer. So anyway, I've, I've heard all this. That's why the reason I'm asking, like I've heard CBUS and we use quite of them in industrial, uh, you know, and currently doing of IIOT, IIOTs now. So that's where we are. But I am in the process of building, uh, signing up for the building contract. Uh, so mm -hmm. I thought this was the best time to, what, how do I approach as in, yep, my, Builder has given me a big list of like, you know, what's he's uh, providing a uh, part of inclusions. But um, obviously, I said, oh, I want smart home. And he said, yep. Uh, then he said, oh, it will cost a fair bit. So what can I have, like a start basic, and then can I upgrade as I go? Or, or it has to be so the minimum thing I need to have? It's, it's certainly, it is, it's been our premium solution for a long time. And the most places you'll see it is in upmarket residential homes. But what we're finding is that people want the technology in all levels of home. So my advice always is, is to start with the, the standard plates. So just your normal iconic plates, clips of iconic plates, um, but get the infrastructure in place. So your pink cable, uh, that's C bus is wired in a specific way. So all of our loads go back to the switchboard as opposed to down the wall to the switch. So it gives us that central location for, for devices. Spend the money on the infrastructure if, if you're building and then add the bells and whistles later because, because infrastructure is very hard to put in afterwards. So once you've built the home, to rewire for CBUS in some homes is impossible. In other homes, yes, then it gets very expensive. But if you're doing it at the stage of build, it's not as, not as dear as you'll think. What we do encourage people, and I don't know if you can see the logo, is, is, to, is to find an eco-expert. Um, those what we call a Schneider Eco Expert uh, for light, light and room control. And those are the people that are best uh, trained and positioned to install a CBUS system for you. Okay. So, and they're happy to work with your builder or your electrician. Whereabouts are you based? Uh, I'm in Brisbane. So. Yeah. 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 So, okay. south side. But, um, yeah, that's what I, so how do I approach? Do I need to have an initial consultation with one of your, as I said, Eco ex Expert to see? So I can give like plan or the type of build. So they can tell me, okay, this is the basic things you need to start yeah. with. Yeah. So they can kind have of budget. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so you said you're on the south side. Yep. So Palara is where I'm building. Yep. Uh, I'm not familiar with that suburb, but you've got um, you've got Lee from a company called Custom Link. You've okay. also you've got um, uh, O'Brien Electrical at Logan Home. Uh, just off the top of my head, that's a couple of guys on the south side that, that could help you with that. Awesome. Okay. So, yep, no worries. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Not a problem. Thanks for joining us. Oh, so, just oh, sorry, before I go, I was asking this question, but um, I know in industrial applications, we have, like, you know, as I said, um, like uh, firm, firmware upgrades. Is that something we need to, how, how critical it is for home systems? Is it something we need to upgrade or, um, upgrade or not? It's something that the installer will do if there's a newer firmware, they'll do it when they're installing it. Um, but generally, no, I've got CBUS in my home and I don't do a lot of okay. firmware upgrades. But um, it's one of those things, more likely than not, it's it's making sure that our teams are upgrading when they're, maybe when Apple doesn't upgrade. That's more probably, you know, okay. yeah. It's not awesome. something that generally a homeowner's got to, worry about but Fantastic. like i will say though like all systems i'll go back to the mercedes analogy you wouldn't buy a mercedes and never take it for a service yeah. I, i'm I, i'd like to push that same thing with with smart homes is that every now and then you should probably get someone to have a look make sure everything's working how it should be and that's how you're going to get the best reliability maybe you know because you know whether i'm not talking about our gear but just electronic gear in general Power supplies often go when we get storms or lightning and that sort of thing. Um, you know, we've got horrible power quality here in, in Queensland. So by all means, you know, popping the hood on the smart home every now and then is, is certainly going to give it longevity. So, sir, in that regard, then, would, would there be a lot of maintenance costs, ongoing costs at all or not? No, it, it's more so, you know, people leave things 10 years with, without sort of having a look at anything and then go and then... It, it, it then could become a big cost. Mm. But, you know, if you engage an eco-expert, 
and you know tell them that every once or two one or two years you want them just to come and make sure everything's working properly then yes the costs are going to be minimal thank you very much thank you no problem how are we going is there any more questions out there i really appreciate everyone joining on this saturday morning um, just, uh, there's one more mate. i was just trying to answer on the chat from craig um you just want to comment on video security and automated entry. Um, yeah. How you how we tie that in? Okay, so I'll be careful here because I'm not not li as licensed security expert. That was just sort of a demonstration of things that became integrated into a smart home. Uh, again, that's something you would a conversation you would have with uh, an eco expert or or an integrator. We call them. Um, They've got the ability to tie other people's systems in with our C bus system, and those other systems can be, you know, keyless entry lock systems or, you know, uh, facial recognition systems. Does that answer the question? Or hopefully it did. I'm not sure. Uh, just a whole lot of question marks. <laughs> no. no? <laughs> Stop staring me up. <laughs> uh, right on. I'll, I'll send a message and I'll just see if anything comes back up in the chat. Uh, yep, no, Craig, thanks. Answers the question. Okay, thanks, Craig. Okay, Craig, you're on mute. From... I'm looking here. Can see bus interface with your home battery? and then use logic to turn on the pool heat pump. So that was sort of, uh, thanks for that question, Brett and Graham. That's the, I was alluding to that before. Now, yes, it might re require what we call some logic or some, some programming in the background, but 100%, I believe that CBUS will be central to that smart home of the future that's going to have batteries on the wall. It's going to have a, an electric vehicle in the garage. And it's gonna you're gonna want to use your sea bus to decide when your pool turns on, when your when your hot water turns on. Uh, at the moment, it's about connectivity. We've got a device in sea bus world without getting too technical that talks lots of different languages. So it obviously talks sea bus. It talks Ethernet or inter, what we call internet. Uh, it talks Modbus and Bacnet, and you'll see a lot of these different devices will talk one of those languages. So it's all about how open that battery company is to want to talk to CBUS and whether or not we've got the module to do it. But certainly you get a talented eco expert on the job and they're going to be able to, you know, pull some of that information out there for you. Great. That's a great question. Mm, it looks like it's it so far. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to get Michael there. Um, shit. I don't know the, the number to book a consultation. The Chris Speck number? Right, no, the I, don't, I don't. Sorry. Uh, I would think it would be on clipsall.com. Uh, Sarah should, be, might, should have that anyway. Yeah, it's that, you've got a 1300 number. I don't know it off my head now, but you've got that central 1300 number that goes to Adelaide or but it's definitely on online on your website okay so it's just it's clips all website not schneider hey just clips all .com. yeah yeah that'll be yeah. it um any more questions there guys anything else in the chat that's like oh just a sec hold on a sec yeah, not for these ones for more for you We got one there. Uh, yeah, sorry, it was a gentleman that's um, watching here just asking if we can get a copy of it. So I've recorded it. Okay. I've not, not done that before in Teams, so it's going to sit somewhere. And as soon as I know, I can email it down to everyone. So yeah, I'm sure I've never done that before, Matt. I don't know if it sits in the on the Teams website because it every, must be. Every, I'm going to need money every time you send it out, though. It's right. Oh, my soul. Well, I'll skim a little bit. It, off the it, yeah, that's getting. right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Being the middleman and all. 
Um, but yes, I'll, um, I've got everyone's email addresses, so um, and you've got mine. So if anyone else wants it, just just email through to me, and and um, as soon as I figure out how to forward it on, I'll do that. Really appreciate everyone jumping on too. I'd, I'd love some feedback. I'm, I was, it's very hard to gauge how I'm very used to presenting to the room there at, at the Home Ideas Centre. So apologies if, if things didn't quite come across as I intended. So hopefully you all got something out of that. And uh, yeah, don't forget to have that conversation with your builder or your electrician. Um, and you know, don't let them say, "Oh, you don't need to worry about that," because Smart homes of the future are actually already here now, and it's an, an expectation of people that are buying homes. So, good luck with that. Well, thank you very much, guys. Lovely to see you both, and thanks everyone for for um, logging in, joining in. Have a lovely weekend. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye now. Oh, that was pretty good, Manny. Yeah, it's very hard to gauge. Um, yeah, there's a few people still there, but, but it was very hard to gauge um, whether it was coming across properly or not. Uh, no, all the, all the comments were positive at the end there, so that's good. Um, so, yeah. It's good. Okay. Well done, man. All righty. Go, and, go, go and enjoy your Saturday. Absolutely. Can you just buff that floor a bit more? I don't think the polish is quite right. I'll get I'll get straight on that. <laughs> <laughs> you you enjoy the rest of the weekend with your family. Do you want to see a disappearing act? Yeah. <laughs> Very clever. Thank you. <laughs> right, Thanks, Rana. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Mate. See you. Have a great weekend. Bye.